Hey Ivan, so I couldn't really copy and paste some stuff, so I decided to just make you a little video and send you the link. Um, <clears throat> so we were talking about the spark timing earlier, and so this is your base spark table. So in the software, just go up to view, spark functions, and base spark table. And so here, this is where this other picture, what we call the uh, spark landscape, comes into picture so now on an engine that's not blown you know, basically um, you're gonna worry with everything from the hundred line and down so basically uh, anything above a hundred kPa is going to be in a boost um, so at idle see here it's showing this is like a range of where your spark timing should be so an idle and you'll have to fire it up and, and basically take a look at it and see where the where the bubble is while it's running. But idle, you know, somewhere between 10 and 25 degrees, like we were talking about, maybe mid to high teens for your application. Um, now in the cruise range, um, you're showing like 25 to 35. Uh, decel or in coasting, you know, you may see as high as 45 degrees. This will kind of be like your vacuum advance type area, like we were talking about. Um, and then of course uh, wide open throttle that would be like your max timing like you know what you would set with a you know like in a carburetor or something your total advance so whether it be 32 34 degrees something like that now one important one to look at is the starting area which is going to be the top left corner now when you've got the software up and you're connected to it you'll have a bubble and um, I'm not hooked up to any uh, to a car here to an ECU, so we kind of have to imagine. But um, when you first key on and the engine's not running, the bubble's going to be up here in this region. So basically, we're looking at manifold pressure, and full atmosphere is going to be about 100 kPa, and no RPM. So in this application, on this spark table, this engine's going to crank at nine degrees. Now, once the engine starts running, it's going to start making vacuum. So you'll see, you know, the bubble will come down because the lower the number on map, the more vacuum. And then the RPMs are come up. So say if it idles at 700, it's probably going to be in this column. And it may be, you know, somewhere, depending on how much vacuum, 70 to down around maybe 30 or something like that. Uh, the wilder the cam, the higher up it's going to idle in this table. Um, so here, you know, if we were, say, around this, this 60, ish kPa area and 700 rpms this thing would idle at uh, 18 degrees spark advance now one thing we talked about earlier um, I forgot that you were running a classic and not the XFI so there's not there's not the fixed timing test mode like we talked about before so what you'll have to do uh, when you're checking your timing is go ahead and fire it up and then in this situation uh, right here like say we had the engine the bubble was floating around in here and the engine was idling what you would need to do would be to click and highlight an area where the bubble is and then change that timing all to one number so for instance um, all you have to do is just hit the enter key it'll say force value and then I'd set that to 10 degrees or 20 whatever you got a good mark on the harmonic balancer for um, once you get that matched up and you get your distributor where it's supposed to be and everything matches up between the spark advance here and what's on the balancer then all you got to do is just use the interpolate function so I'm going to click up here where I, the last cell that I didn't change all the way down to this one and then all the way over to where the old table was so I've got everything highlighted that I changed here plus all the cells around it and then I'm going to right click and hit interpolate. And basically interpolate is just a fancy word for kind of averaging it out. So it kind of made everything smooth again. So that's going to be it for timing. If we look at this one for instance like we were talking about earlier, it's going to idle somewhere around here probably in the 17, 18 range, 19, 20, something like that. When you're cruising, it's going to make more vacuum and the RPMs are going to go up. So we'll probably cruise in around here and where it's like 33 and a half degrees and then if we stomp on the pedal and when the vacuum goes away it's going to come up here 
and this particular engine only runs at 21 degrees total timing which is probably just a safe setting because this is one of our starter tunes um, so what I probably one of the first things I would do is say okay well I probably want 34 degrees total timing at 3000 so I highlight that whole big area and change this to 34 and then um, basically use that as kind of a, a slope here so I can use that interpolate feature again to average it out where it's smooth um, down here right click interpolate so it kind of you want to kind of smooth everything out and then up here where I changed it um, I want to go ahead and interpolate everything down over here this would be kind of like putting your advanced curve in so hit I and boom so that way everything's kind of smooth one of the biggest things you want to look out for for instance, if it's say it's 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 idling around in here, okay, so I've kind of changed a little bit where it's probably a little bit higher, 18 degrees. I don't want you know 35, you know, next to an 18 or something like that, because that'll cause a lot of surging. Uh, things you don't want. You just want to make sure that everything's a nice, uh, smooth transition. And you basically want to get the timing kind of knocked out first, at least in a rough area. You may not want to go full advance uh, until you get the fuel right first. Um, but on the fuel side of things, it's going to work real similar with the landscapes like we talked about earlier. Um, so here's the spark timing landscape. Um, and here we have the VE landscape. And the VE is where you're going to do the majority of, of your tuning. Um, basically what you're going to do is change this VE number to make sure that the actual air-fuel ratio on the laptop matches up what the target air-fuel ratio says or is commanding. So notice here normal numbers for idle somewhere in the 30 to 50 range. Wide open throttle 75 to 95 is pretty common. Uh, race cars, so you might see closer to 100 or a little over. Uh, it has to do with just how efficient the engine is. Uh, cruising, we're going to see 50 to 75 range. And then when we're off the throttle, you're going to see lower numbers, uh, typically 20 to 60, just depending on the engine. The last one, is these three tables are kind of like the big three. The spark table, the target air fuel, and the VE table. So we've talked about spark and VE. So the last one would be the target air fuel table. Um, and here's your air fuel ratio landscape. It may have cut it off a little bit at the bottom. Hopefully, hopefully you can see all that. So it kind of just ideas for where you want to be for target air fuel. Idle 13 to 15. Most hot rods usually kind of to the lower side 13.0, 13.5. Uh, wide open throttle, 12.0 to 13.5. And I typically shoot for, on something street driven, 12.6 to 12.8. Uh, cruise, you can lean it out some. Um, usually like 13.5 to 15.0 is what we're showing here. Usually like a, about a 14.0, maybe 13.8 is kind of my starting point for cruise. And decel when you're off the throttle, you can lean it way out. So 14 to 16. Um, that kind of covers that. We'll kind of look and show you where. So you've got the target air fuel ratio table. And so you can see here at idle it's commanding, you know, somewhere in here 13.7, um, which is, is, is okay. This engine was probably a little more efficient. Like I said, I'd probably just take and bump that down a bit. Maybe 13.5, 13.4 is my starting place. Uh, wide open throttle. I usually like a little bit richer for a street car. Race car is a little different. You know, you probably run lean as mean, so maybe 13.0, 13.2. Um, but really, you know, getting on the dyno or getting out at the track and trying stuff is the best way to find the best air fuel ratio. And then I kind of want to transition this down a little bit into the cruise area. So I'm going to use that 
interpolate feature we've been using. And then when you're off the throttle, which should be down in here somewhere, it's okay for it to run lean. You pretty much, you know, from idle to when you get in the throttle, you're going to notice that the engine's kind of more in, and it'll take a certain path. And a lot of areas, like down here, it would only run through when you're really wide open throttle and you let off and it'll come back through here. Uh, now, basically, you want to make sure that your targeter fuel table is right, at least pretty close to where you want to be. Um, this would be a pretty pretty decent guideline. You could have this go down a little more. A lot depends on how much vacuum it makes. Um, once your target air fuel is in a decent spot, then that's where the rest of the time you're going to spend mostly in this base VE table. Um, now this one here, you know, before we talked about 30 to 50, this particular tune is going to be probably pretty fat at idle, but most of our starting tunes tend to be pretty fat just to make sure that the engine runs. Um, so, you know, probably off the get-go, when you fire this dude up, like I said, it'd probably be idling here, you know, 700-ish, you know, maybe around 60 or 50. And it's usually never exactly in one cell. So you're going to highlight several of them. And then there's a couple different options. For one, you can right-click and go to Trim. And do a percentage trim so say if I want to take out 10% I'm just gonna punch minus sign 10 and then it lowered everything by 10% now you can also use uh, hopefully not all laptops have them but most do a page up and a page down key don't use the up and down arrow look for page up and page down and what you can do when you're online there will be a mini dash below with actual and air fuel, or actual air fuel and target air fuel in it, and you can basically just use the page up or page down key. So I'm hitting the page down now. It's just doing one number at a time. So you can watch your actual air fuel ratio, which is your mixture, and just go one at a time and watch it and get it where you want to be. So if we want to be say 13.4 here, you just adjust this until it says 13.4. So if it's a higher number, like say if we're 14.5, that means it's lean. So I'm going to go up, you know, and I go three or four numbers, give it a second, see where it is, give it three or four more numbers. Or if it's way too fat, say it's like 11 to 1, you know, then same kind of drill. You're going to go down, give it three, four numbers, give it a second to sort of stabilize, and then go some more. Now sometimes you'll notice the bubble might move on you. Because say if it's real rich and you lean it out some, then it may start making more vacuum, which means a lot of times the bubble will go down or it may rev up because now the engine suddenly it's kind of been freed where it's making, you know, where it's just being more efficient. So sometimes you gotta you gotta readjust and basically grab some more cells. And so the thing to remember, okay, well I got all these 83s and stuff in here now that's probably not going to be good so what I usually do is kind of grab some and the first off I'll just interpolate and that'll get you a heck of a lot closer than where you were and then I'm gonna grab in like say if I'm making more vacuum and I'm idling a little bit higher I might grab here if my bubbles floating around in here and then same drill just start doing the page down um, until you find where it needs to be that's a quick crash course. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, give me a ring. Hopefully this will help. Thanks.